like, oh, you're boring. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna go, I mean, right? Okay. Hi, Yasanti. <laughs> I had a date. <laughs> so I know why. I know why. Yes. <laughs> what are we gonna talk about today? Online yeah. Matchmaking and relationships. Yes. And love. <laughs> Which is why we're in like a pinky shade okay. as well. And I think this is a good opportunity. Like I've always waited for a moment in my life to say this, but on Wednesdays we wear pink. Ah. <laughs> now I'm dressed in peace. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <Andy. laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> so, online dating. Yeah. I thought this topic was very, very, very um, relevant, especially in this current age. Um, you know, I personally, for me, online dating, um, it's not to say new, I know about it, but I've never experienced it myself. Mm -hmm. But I know you told me something a couple of weeks back um, that I think would be nice this for is everybody. <laughs> For everybody to, you know, know about, like, you know, because my impression of online dating, honestly, is, first question is safety. Mm. Like, you know, catfishing, scams, people lose a lot of money when they find, like, an online lover and stuff, you know. So, I'm just, like, the first thing that comes to my mind when it comes to online dating is really just that. But, you know, I've heard of our colleagues, you know, who met their better half, correct, online, yeah, online. So then I know that, okay, it's, it may not be that bad after all. But uh, since you yourself have experience in it, so why don't you share a little bit about that as well? I mean, really, what got you started or what made you want to try online dating? Okay. Um, before I go into my experience with online dating, full disclosure, okay. full disclosure, I wasn't actively online dating, like... Okay. You know, so I know some people in the game have been doing it for like two to three years, you know, getting a run of it and stuff. I only tried it for a month. Okay. okay. <laughs> so before that, nothing? Nothing. No. I have apps. Not tried, no apps no on the apps, phone. Nothing. Okay. I wasn't actively dating either because okay. I'm that kind of person who just spends my Saturday and Sunday locked up in my room reading books. Why not? I love that too. Uh, right? <laughs> like romance books. Yeah. So I don't really like actively date. Um, so I decided to try online dating because my friends were pushing me. Number one. Okay. Number two, I'm 28. Okay. And I'm single. Okay. So only friends, family not pushing. Family pushing. <laughs> also, when are you gonna get married? That question is done. Okay. So, there was a teeny bit of pressure, but but the ultimate pushing factor was I've always had this innate curiosity right in me, like yeah. like lies that that lies in me, like. How 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 this experience would go? You know, I always wanted to try. Yeah. I always tell myself, no, not safe. Don't try. No, not safe. Don't try. Correct. Like like for me, even to think about the apps and everything, like the first thing honestly that comes to my mind is not safe. Correct. And yeah. like a bunch of my friends have tried online dating. I don't know like, whether it's my friend problem, <laughs> okay, or whether it's their yeah, qu questionable choices in men. I have right. no idea. Okay. But a huge chunk of their online dating experience is not good. So that okay. has tarnished my view of yeah. like online dating. So that was also one of the reasons why I put it off as like as long as I could. But okay. in the end, my curiosity got the best. Uh, okay. So I decided, you know what? Maybe there's something to this. So okay. I tried, like, tried. So I didn't try Tinder. Okay. I didn't try um, Bumble. I'll leave it at that. Okay. I tried another app that I thought was somewhat decent. Okay. Why? Why decent? Because it had what makes it was it? more reputable. Like, okay. Okay. Tinder and, and uh, what's the other one again? There was Bumble. 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 Yeah. Okay, okay. Because these days Tinder and Bumble are known for one night stands. One night stands. Yeah. That wasn't what I was looking for. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for that, go lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No judgment there. No judgment. Yeah. yeah. But that wasn't what I was looking for. Okay. So I tried. One month was all I can take, Adeline. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot take any longer because the conversation was so dry. <laughs> Could it could it be just because that one person like you know if so happened it was that one person that you were having a dry conversation okay. with? I'm also problematic a bit. Right. Okay. <laughs> be self aware here, right? Okay. I was very picky when I was swiping. That's not problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I was, see that's problematic. I was very picky when I was swiping because okay. I'm like, eh, eh. 
Eh. At one point, I was so judgmental. Because essentially, what you decide is how they look and then their bio. Right, okay. If okay. they don't put much um, effort into their bio, I'm like, nah. Mm, yeah, okay, okay. It's kind of saying something, at right? Yeah. point, it was so superficial. So I'm like, whatever. So mm-hmm. I ended up swiping on one month, three people. Okay, okay. I don't know. The, for the OGs out there yeah. like, You know the experts Is that ratio good or not I don't know But <laughs> Out of the three people I only actively had conversation With one person Okay and why What made you like You know Continue That's also that. because That dude When he replied There was some element Of energy And And, okay. and um, Charisma in it Okay not just like Hi yeah, not, not like just dry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. dry text. Ah. So, hi, how are you? And w- and what was funny was the dude was very passionate about his research, research and stuff. Research. So, uh, yeah. So it was good. We had a topic to talk about. Okay. But then, eventually, it got dry. Also. Ah, like and you, you just didn't know what else to talk about. Yeah, didn't know what else to talk about. Yeah. How? I'm the kind of person I wanna I wanna have like real like real in depth conversation like what's your view on life? So like oh, what it, makes you tick? <laughs> so like should there be like a checklist like for example like okay this is how you can have your like you know conversation starter or something. Yeah like yeah that. I think Not a checklist would be helpful. But then if it's so dry then one month was all I can cope with. Okay. And then I'm like you know what I'm done. So do you just ditch him or what? <laughs> like I'm, I'm not gonna reply. Dead. Okay. <laughs> But what happened was I just ended up Okay, not camera safe Okay <laughs> But what I ended up happening was I deactivated uh, That particular app Okay The guy that I was talking to If you're watching this <laughs> I'm sorry I did not reply to your messages um, It's not you, it's me <laughs> It's me Okay I just got bored Yes, no no hard feelings, right? No hard feelings, no hard feelings okay, guys no hard feelings. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't reply lah. I just went MIA But it wasn't that deep even to begin with So I'm sorry <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was my um, experience. So one month was all I can. So yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we. So okay. After this one month, like, are you even thinking about trying? Online dating again? No. <laughs> Sounds okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I shouldn't no. laugh. But but you're okay. I shouldn't laugh. But it sounds <laughs> tra- traumatic. <laughs> it sounds traumatic. Cool. Wow. It okay. Wasn't traumatic. It's more like there wasn't a spark. There wasn't nothing. Yeah. It was so dry. It was so. Boring, I would say. Mm. Okay, so like for me, it's very old school, right? So like for me, it's like for example, okay, I, you have you make friends, and then uh, if you you like that person, that person also kind of like you, and then you kind of establish that okay, let's go on a date, like then we kind of like each other, and then those are you continue. Movies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, rest assured, it also happens in real life. <laughs> I hope it happens to me. Yes, uh, yes. The, the, it's not impossible. Of, <laughs> how did you meet your? Okay, so um, I met my husband in church actually. Okay. So the, <laughs> you're a very good girl, okay? And that I mean, of course, you know, like um, having that in common was already something for me. But doesn't mean that every like you know guy in church is you know like a perfect match, right? So of course, like conversations, getting know, to know each other, yeah, conversations, getting to know each other, and then um. You know, knowing that okay, this this person is nice to talk to, um, it's fun to talk to. He seems like a you know good character. So then we went on to dating, um. So he asked like, okay, should we date? You know that kind of thing. And then uh, eventually, then it went on to, Man. will you marry me? You know. So but that that took a while. So we were dating for a very long time before we. I mean, since I was sixteen, and then we got married. Only when I was like 28 It sounds so. like stuff of a fairy tale you know? Does it even happen these days With online dating and stuff like that? I really want to know I really so, so guys, by the way That's Yasanti's question Does it really happen these days? Let us know in the comments like meeting somebody yeah. in like organic way mm. and stuff like Yeah, yeah Like your fairy tale story, right? We want to know too yeah. Yeah, so... So we have a lot of questions, right? Yes, I have a lot of questions actually for online dating. And I think you too, in the sense of, in the sense of the online dating scene. Um, and dating culture. Dating culture, dating. yes, yeah. And the difference, like how it used to be and how it is these days. That yeah. Might like. Yeah, yeah. And why there's a lot of... Dry conversations? Dry conversations, <laughs> for the lack of better words. Um, yeah. A lot of concerns, a lot of yeah. related issues. Because back in the day, it didn't seem that complicated. Correct, correct. Or you just go, you meet, you talk, if you vibe. 
Correct. And back in the day, you have things like matchmaking where you just trust your parents. Like, okay, this person, this um, parents match me this person with this person, and then like, okay, I'm staying with this person and married yeah. to this person. So like, um, you know, back in the days, there's such thing, but you know, modern the days, days, of course, things has changed so much. Correct. Correct. So you know, we are here. We want to answer all these burning questions. Yes. And more. And more. And we actually have an expert Wait. in it. Yes, Andy. <laughs> Which I would do the great review because I have burning questions. Well, right? And let's give it up for Izzy. Hello. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Thank I you. I wouldn't for your call myself too. expert, but <laughs> I know one or two things. Mm. One or I hope, things. yeah. And yeah. and you know the the burning things that we need to know. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, Yasanti shared her story as well, and like. For me, I shared my concerns about it, like online dating mm. or even um, anything, meeting a stranger, you know, safety. Safety is always a concern. Like if it's face to face, you're worried you're going to get kidnapped mm. or something. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then like, um, you know, if it's online, you can't see the person behind the screen, right? Mm. So how do you know if it's actually safe or not so mm-hmm. easy before we go into yeah, that yeah. Yeah. let's just uh, in, perhaps you could introduce yourself a little tell us who you are right of course <laughs> uh so i'm easy um uh, izati easy is you know my nickname um so uh, by profession i'm a clinical psychologist i'm not sure if you're aware of what that profession is but basically i work with um Basically, my clients are those with mental health disorders. Uh, so I run uh, assessments, I run therapy sessions, so I provide diagnosis, mm-hmm. things like that. So um, basically, help them cope or or and and or eventually like get better mental health. Basically, mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, but at Date Well Project, uh, what I do is I technically my title is a matchmaker. Um, so what that means is that I do have these clients um, who would like for to find like a partner, so they're ready to settle down, or they have exhausted all other means of uh, dating. You know, online dating. We also have speed dating. Yeah. Usually, our clients are those who went to speed dating events, but they're like, "Oh, speed dating is not really for me. I want something a little bit more personalized, um, or I don't have time to go to a lot of speed dating, for example." Um, so then, what I do is um, I get their profile, and then I look at the connections that we have our participants other matchmaking clients and see if um they match um i, I guess we can talk about what criteria yeah, like yeah. matches is in a bit in a bit but yeah that's basically what i do wow yeah. mm. oh. <laughs> yes basically yeah. like a glorified yeah. antisima la, a little yeah. bit yes yeah but a better version yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow and i'm just wondering like from a clinical psychologist mm. to a matchmaker like what um to also being a matchmaker mm. like what made you also want to um well at first uh grace my uh, our founder was the one that's doing matchmaking okay. this ma- matchmaking service but then she kind of moved on to a bigger responsibility okay. so she no longer has the time or the hands to do the matchmaking service and she put a very strong importance to have somebody with a psychology background so either mm. a counselor or a clinical psychologist or like a relationship psychologist yeah. um in a sense, um, because what we are trying to provide at Date Well is not just a means of finding somebody who we think, you know, oh, you like travel to Japan? Oh, I have somebody who likes traveling to Japan, you know, like a very surface mm. kind of um, matches. Yeah. Uh, we are we want to build psychological profiles of our clients and the matches that we present to them. What this means is that we want to know their dating habits, their communication style, what are the things that are challenging for them when it comes to relationships Um, and if even they are ready for a relationship at that point in time um, so then Grace kind of like reached out to me at first it's like hey would you like to help me with the admin stuff that's how she lured me in would you like to help me with the admin stuff (laughs) didn't take note take note yeah Yeah. (laughs) and then I'm like oh yeah why not because I do have uh, you know spare time and I do like organizational things and then when I signed the contract okay here are a bunch of clients I'll introduce you to them Uh, you take over and I'm like hello what's going on (laughs) so I'm like okay I guess I'm here then Uh, I guess I'll do it Um, yeah so that's been about it's it's been quite new. Uh, it's quite okay. a new role. Mm-hmm. I've only joined them back in April. Oh, mm, okay. So still about four months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Still, I'm still learning the ropes. How are you finding it so far? Yeah. Helping people um, find you now. Yes. It's a little bit interesting. Uh, kind of challenging as well, because uh, like I mentioned, like a lot of 
um, my clients they have a very clear idea what they want mm. um, and some I guess that is easier than those who have no idea what they want. Uh, so both sets also have kind of like challenges for those who are very clear about what they want. No matches are good enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but those who don't have don't know what they want, any matches is good enough. But then when they meet the person, they're like, mm, actually no, mm, actually no. So it's a little bit difficult trying to kind of balance that. Um, but it's interesting. It's it's been quite interesting so far. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so how do you um get these clients? Is it like a through an online dating, like um, so like how they find you? Yeah, how do they find you? Correct. Um, so like I mentioned, some of them, most of them actually, were our speed dating yeah clients, mm-hmm. and then they were like, hey, you know what? Like, uh, I know you have that matchmaking service. I'm interested. Um, others they. Um, actually found out through social media okay, uh, of okay. course Instagram yeah. our TikTok's crazy yeah, I don't TikTok's, know if you, yeah. if you guys want to go check out Datewell's TikTok Date well. oh, yeah like, I don't know why it's like funny a lot of our clients come from TikTok uh-huh. um and I guess Google, um, some come from uh, our competitors and unfortunately they do not have good experience with the competitors. Right. So okay. they kind of like are looking for other companies. Okay. Uh, so then they found us and yeah, that usually like that. Lah. Okay, um, so what's like the average age, gr- age group? Um, we do have about early 30s okay. up until mid 40s. Okay, mm, yeah. it's never too late yeah. to find love. Yeah. Never too late. Never too yeah. late. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, I think we have a couple of questions as yes. well like uh, we mentioned. So shall we dive into that? Yep. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So yes, would you like to start? Yes, Andy. <laughs> Pleasure. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first question for you, Izzy, to start off: How has the rise of online dating platforms, you know, changed how society views relationship and dating? Right. Um, I would say that it's not all bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's just start there at Date Well Project. Even myself, I don't think dating apps are bad. Okay. Um, I met my husband through a dating app. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I am one of the successful stories, I would say, right? Okay. Um, but like you mentioned, like it's tire. It does get tiring. I was on and off dating apps for five, six years. Um, so you were in the game, lah. I was in the game, okay, definitely. Okay, okay. But I guess uh, it really de- it depends on how you approach it. It, it requires a certain skill set. Mm-hmm. It requires a certain kind of um, intelligence to it. I would say. Um, how it has changed the society views in relationship I would say number one like you mentioned like you get very judgmental Mm. Uh, there's a lot of like um, less meaningful filters you look Mm. at how they look you look at how what they write actually even these dating apps nowadays they even have they even let you have these filters age oh sorry age filter height filter you know um, Um, race race preference and things like that like so you kind of already like filter your pool and then you further filter it on your you know like mental I don't blame people for being judgmental like it's yeah. not your fault at all because it's how the apps are built Yeah, it's yeah. built for you to do that right so that you know like and then after a while you, you come into it like oh you have good intentions I want to find someone you know it's time for me to build connections but after a while it becomes meaningless swiping mm. right it's like because we don't have meaningful filters um, I would say yeah. so um, you kind of like look at potential partners as what they can give you even before talking to them mm-hmm. rather than like having this curiosity of like hey uh, what kind of conversations would we have you know like mm-hmm. what kind of connections can we make yeah. whereas like when you meet the person organically when mm-hmm. you meet the person at church or when you go at the office you know office romance you already know the person like in a certain setting, you know, yeah. you've seen them in right. person. Even though they don't talk to you, you see how they talk to others. You see how they right. behave themselves in public. Um, and you kind of already have like, oh, you know what? I think this person looks interesting. And we don't even look at like how... We have no idea how tall he is. Okay. We only know they're taller than me, you know, yeah. like, or we yeah. shorter than me. Like, we don't know um, what they do for a living. Mm. We don't know... Um, like how good their English is if you, you haven't seen them speaking yeah. you know like how when you see a stranger on a train you're like oh my god that person is so attractive for no yeah. reason right and if the same person is on a dating app would you even swipe right on them most probably not yeah, because like you true. would look at like what they do you would it's look at one dimensional yeah. yeah so um, that's 
there's no authenticity um, there. So I again, like it's a good platform for you to explore your options. Mm. Uh, but like I mentioned, there's a certain skill set that you need to have. Um, to be successful on dating apps. See, I went into yeah. it with not prepared at all. Like no <laughs> expectations or anything. Do I need? Yeah. 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 I just entered it like blindfolded. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty good. I mean, a uh, pretty good mindset to have as well, in my opinion. Isn't so that mm. Yeah, we just that, right? <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think so. even as like a user, okay, maybe the person swiping, but you as a user yourself, the way you present yourself in this dating app is also different. Very filtered. Yeah. Very filtered, right? Yeah. You choose the yeah. best pictures. Yes. You mm. change your bio every few days. Yeah. You know, like... Wow. Yeah, so... And we omit certain things about ourselves. Also. Yeah, mm. so... And like we, um, like for example, uh, just like a crude example, right? Like girls know that oh, if I um, show myself a, a certain way, because I have I have a friend who said that uh, a, a girl a, a girl friend lah, and she said that oh, like all these guys, the only one girls who don't wear to don't one, uh-huh. oh, right? Uh, so the only one girls who do this or do that, and then like guys also has come to me, oh, the only one guys with like, who pose in front of expensive cars or things uh-huh. like that, you know? So that, right? So, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, are the only one guys who, you know, wear suits in their pictures, pose in front of the parliament, you know, something like that. Yeah. So, so it's like, uh, so then, when you go into the minds, when you go into that, not only you judge people, you feel your your own self esteem as well. It's yeah. like if I don't fit a certain criteria, then I'm not gonna get matches. Correct. Oh, I'm not I worthy felt the for. Pressure. I felt the pressure because I was during the sign up process. I was given the choice to pick six best photos of myself. Mm. Right. Okay. Guess so what? that's the process already. Five out of the six pictures were, were had some amount of filter on. Them. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I still my face is still yeah, there. Yeah. 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 But like, I try to augment it to. Fit Certain beauty standards. Yeah. So yeah. As I say it, I'm yeah. proud of it. Not my proudest moment in life. Yeah. But <laughs> thank you for being honest, though. <laughs> but I felt the need to to look pretty, mm. to look. Or what like society? I, I, or I didn't d- want any blemishes. Yeah. To be seen on my screen, my smile was one of my insecurities. So, like most of the pictures that I pick, did not have like me, you know, mm. yeah. on my pretty lights. Yeah. So then expect expectations in that sense yes, have definitely changed. Yeah. definitely has changed our expectation has gone skyrocket mm. you know um actually it's really interesting just now like we make first imp- okay first impressions have changed too right yeah. like when you see somebody in, in person you kind of already know how they carry themselves yeah. when they talk to you they're like oh, oh like what like how well articulate how articulated them they, they are mm. but when you are on um speed uh, sorry not speed dating on dating apps yes. You've already filtered based on your laundry list, mm. and then you've already filtered based on the pictures and their bios and yeah. whatnot, and then you further filter on how they approach you. The first sentence is crucial, mm. crucial. That is where all the links. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's crucial. Like I, when I was in the game, mm. like the moment. Okay, I usually like. Uh, on Bumble What's for example oh, I don't no have pickup lines I usually it really depends on, on you know like um, I usually would comment something on their profile right, right. right? so for example like uh, for example they like travelling or something like that and then I, maybe I would ask them like hey um, uh, what's what's the best country you've visited so far for example mm. right take note, take note. yeah so <laughs> you show interest the other person again that's one of the skill set that you yeah. need to have on dating apps, right? Right. So, um, so then, then their reply then would be like, for example, some of them are like, oh, like I really like um, Australia because of this, blah, blah, blah. But some of them is like, uh, all countries are the same. Unmatch. Oh, you know I mean? right. You already yeah. like, then there's also that no pressure, like, oh, if I don't like this person, I can just like unmatch them. Without um, taking into, do, should we take into regard their feelings and stuff? Yeah, correct. That's correct. the thing, right? If in person, right, if I go like, oh, you like traveling? Uh, what's the what's the favorite uh, country you've been so far? And and, and Yasanti said like, oh, um, I like. All of them, I guess. Uh, it's all the same. I cannot like get up and leave, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I cannot be like, oh, you're boring. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot go, I right? Mean, you still have to lie and right? Yeah. 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 So that on dating apps, you can. You mm. can just either ghost them or you can unmatch them. So, it's 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 ridiculous expectations. Yeah, you were right. Yeah. Like expectations. Like we expect them to from the get go to be interesting. To be interesting. Yeah. 
So wow. Yeah. But I'm just wondering with all these options for yeah. online dating now, like um, traditional dating, you know, like or how like I know dating, dating yeah. as like um. Does it is it even does it still exist in a certain way or how has that changed? Mm, yeah, I would evolved. say that um, it does exist. Yeah, of course. I mean, okay. you are living proof of that. <laughs> um, I know um, some of like the the participants or the clients that we have. Um, like for example, uh, one of the matchmaking client that I have, um, I set him up on a date, and then uh, it unfortunately didn't work out but then he said that after a few months I followed up with him hey what's going on with you he found some someone from his church oh. you guess so it does it does happen church seems to be yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. you know why uh, because that is basically the fundamentals of making friends yeah. you know when we right. go to school mm-hmm. uh, the reason why we have friends at school why we have friends at work is because we attend the same places mm. over and over and over again and meet the same people over and over again and you build connections that way True. so um, we did, and then with the dating apps and technology, and uh, you know, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, Instagram is now also a dating app. LinkedIn is also can be turned into a dating app. Yeah, I've seen some posts going around. Exactly. Oh, so wow. you know, like DMs yeah. So like how it has transformed, I would say that again, this is another skill. Like how I navigated it back when I was single yes. was that I do not like to spend a lot of time on the app itself. Like mm-hmm. I would rather like oh. Okay, sounds like a quite an interesting person. Mm. Let's meet. Mm. Ah, yeah. Okay. Because okay. then I can talk to you for like weeks or months on end, and then yeah. when we meet, there's no chemistry. Then I would have wasted months on you, right? Correct. So, um, then let's meet, or at the very least, let's have a phone call. Mm-hmm. You know, so when uh-huh. it's phone call, it's less filtered. It's more spontaneous, and then you kind of already kind of like can understand the person a little bit. There's like vibe going on, uh, and then when you meet the person, then you know, mm-hmm. because you will not know at all. Like you will not know whether or not the person matches you, or if it's somebody that you're interested in even, or right. you know, we, before you meet them. Correct. Yeah. So I guess that is one way that it can change. You know, like um, I guess people also because of online dating, um, they don't meet mm-hmm. as well, uh, which is why safety is also a concern. Yeah. Correct. Actually, correct. even not meeting them, safety is still a concern. Yeah. Scams, catfishing, yeah. things like that. You know, like love scams and things like that still exist. So correct. Yeah. So like, is there like a rule of a thumb in the sense of how Ooh. can you filter or you know like um any signs or it's it's very difficult right because mm. anybody can post as anyone. Mm. You know that's the thing. Mm. So like that's why I'm just wondering. Um, I would say that number one, trust your gut feeling. Mm. If if you think it's too good to be true, then it's definitely too good to be true. Um, if the person... Okay, just put yourself... Um, we're all women here. Unfortunately, we cannot get like a gentleman's point of view. But as a woman, if, for example, you already found someone online, I guess Yasanti is the only person I can ask, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. If you find somebody interesting, wouldn't you want to meet them? Honestly, like I did... The, the dude that I was talking to in the beginning he did sound very interesting and I had like a thought to actually like meet up but a huge part of me was very very hesitant mm. because am I ready to meet a stranger mm. that was a mm. question like I felt like it's still too early for me to mm. like meet that person and I wanted to just get to know them a little bit more before I decided mm. to meet them mm. then it got dry yeah right so <laughs> if for example the person avoids meeting you like uh, every time you ask hey let's meet up mm. they're like fishy you know that's already a red flag mm. um, or if for example they don't want to meet you I mean technology is helpful now too like you can call them you can video call them after a few weeks of talking you know and if they still like oh I don't want to or like they give a gazillion of reasons that's yeah. also a bit iffy like yeah. what are you what are you, what are you hiding to, right, right? Yeah. so like again that's that's something that why are they on the dating app then I don't if know. That's a good uh, question. That's, that's a good question then. That yeah. It could be that they are bored. Maybe their intentions are different. Um, it could be, again, th- it, they could be catfishers, you know, and if going on calls or going on uh, video calls could blow their cover, you know, things mm. like that. So, okay. so, kalau bagi banyak alasan lah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It gets like very fishy lah. Yeah, like, it gets very fishy. It. If, you, if, you don't, if you don't think mm. the person is genuine, 
Yeah. Right? Genuineness is definitely something that us as humans we can feel it. Mm. So if you don't feel it, then something is wrong there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I would say. So guys, trust your guts. Yeah, That's definitely the most trust important. your guts. Yeah. And yeah. If they give banyak alasan, better to be careful. Lah. Better to be careful. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Looks like it. So yeah, okay. I'm just wondering, right, Easy? Like, okay, so like for Yasin for example, I mean, you apologized at the beginning about. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry again. Okay. <laughs> about yeah, so, but you know, I'm just wondering if there's like a mental health impact to that, like ghosting mm. people, you know, this kind of stuff. Like, um, right. you know, like like on the other end of the screen, right, where the person yeah. feel like um, oh my gosh, I am not worthy. Especially you know, if the person self right. esteem or right. whatever not is right. Yeah. I like obsessive, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Off, no worries, no worries. Like, yeah. Like, okay, like when I'm texting with the three people, yeah. right? When they take too long to text. Oh, so what goes? What goes? Oh, right. What's your problem? Like, right, okay, okay. And that's why I kind of hate myself because I'm a very fast texter in a sense. Like, people text, if I see it, I text. And then I'll be like, what is taking you so long to text back? You know? Mm. Then text like one day later, mm. two yeah. days later. Yeah. How come you're so busy sometimes you cannot text? Yeah. I find myself going okay. down that kind of yeah. uh, train of thought. Right, yeah, it okay. It was not healthy. Yeah. It was. Wow, so yeah, yeah, you can see the impact, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Like, like ghosting. <sighs> I hated it. I hated it. Yeah. I'm so thankful I'm married now. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm ghosted again, I'm like, oh, so tiring, oh, right? Wow. So it must so, be very draining as it's well. It's definitely very draining. Mm. Okay, um, like what you described, Basanti, is actually, mm. okay, so as humans, uh, psychology speaking, when we attach ourselves to a person, um, there's a psychology theory called attachment theory. Um, there are different types of attachment styles, right? Mm-hmm. I myself, I'm very aware of myself. I'm I'm, I'm an anxious attachment person, similar to you. Like what you uh, what you uh, <laughs> describe is that actually an anxious attachment style. What that means is that we need constant reassurance mm-hmm. that you're still interested in me, that you're still there. Um, you know, like uh, when there's a slight indication of uh, disinterest, then we start questioning ourselves. We get really anxious. Ooh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So because we um uh you know like we need that we need that reassurance. Yeah. So that um it's also a, a matter of self esteem, you know, like um am I am I not desirable, you know, I did I do again, did I do something wrong? Um is this person just playing me? Am I that easy to, to play? You know, am like I things boring? am I boring? Yeah. <laughs> So it's definitely that anxiety is really, um, really, really. It drives you crazy, basically, yes. right? Because so, yeah. you kind of like you. There's there's that uncertainty of what's happening. Are they gonna text me back? Should I back off? Are they really that busy? Should am I not be understanding? You know, there's all of that, right? Why yeah, and yeah, yes, <laughs> psychologist. <laughs> And then so there's, <laughs> there's like that lack of reassurance for mm. yourself. I'm not saying that um, the other person needs to give you reassurance. When you have anxiety, an anxious um, attachment style, that's definitely something that you need to work on yourself. Okay. And um, thankfully, I have worked on myself. That that's a prerequisite of being a psychologist. You need to work yeah. on yourself um, to build a more secure attachment. You know, like um, understanding that you need something, but at the same thing, also building that boundary okay. that. This is how it's okay to treat people, and this is how it's okay to treat me, mm-hmm. right? Uh, without like judging the other person or faulting the other person. But when you are still working on yourself, we're still working on your self esteem, still working on that anxiety, the lack of reassurance, the lack of, you know, the when you don't know what's happening, yeah. it can be really detrimental to your mental health, to your self esteem, to your oh. to your view of yourself. Yeah. Right? And that gets really tiring mentally. Oh, okay. Right. And, but I would like to also bring you to consider the ghoster's point of view. Correct. Mm. Right? Why do they do that? Yeah, what's your problem? What's their problem? Okay. <laughs> the thing is, um, that is unfortunately one of the downsides of online dating, right? Like, it gives you the option to get up and leave. <laughs> Again, like, if I'm not interested in you, yes, auntie, oh, I just get up and leave. Yeah. You would still be like, oh, did I do something wrong? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> right? Um, so, I would say that um, 
it could be just because they are just not interested mm-hmm. uh, it could truly be just because they don't have the skill set or maybe they're just not a texter mm-hmm. you know like i know the driest person on text when i meet them they're like super funny super engaging they're just really bad texters my husband's one of them <laughs> right he's okay. horrible at texting and during the like earlier stages of our relationship i'm like are you not interested in me and he's like you know what let's just call let's just talk because i hate texting mm. so you know like then that's his part of like the effort that he puts in right um because uh, he knows that i need reassurance i tell him that i do need reassurance and this is the set of things that you know the boundary that i have to put in if you i understand you're not a texter i know you're not busy but if you are not in the space of texting can you just at least let me know mm. you know like oh uh, i am occupied right now i'll text yeah. you tomorrow or i'll get back to you so at least i know oh i should just wait and you're not ignoring me right yeah. Yeah. so from his point of view it's like oh i'm just busy you just wait lah because like for him if i don't text him for a few days he's like okay easy he's busy i'll just wait you see they don't see anything yeah. wrong with it and yeah. i wouldn't see there's anything wrong with it if that is the way you know like they that they um like, think yeah, right yeah, they, they behave but, so yeah. and that's fine um but there's also another attachment style uh, that i would like to bring up here called the avoidance attachment style this is where whenever things get serious or when things need commitment they avoid it or they okay. self sabotage themselves okay. so they also need to work on themselves but while they are working on themselves uh, you know like opening themselves to uh, vulnerability sometimes they ghost you when you ask too too difficult questions mm. or um things are getting a little bit more serious they like oh i cannot do this then they have the option to just get up and leave right rather than having that conversation hey i don't feel comfortable this is not this moving too fast they're like oh they have the option to just block you or unmatch you or just yeah. leave you on red yeah so yeah. that kind of like fuels that avoidance right yeah. i can avoid it so i'll avoid it right oh, so right. there's that too so then like you know would you say that um you know if you know for yourself that perhaps um you need some time to work on yourself mm. would that mean you one should probably avoid online dating first mm. until I would That's say That's a very good question mm, yeah. Very good question Because I find it relatable mm. Okay, I have Went on a pseudo date before, right? Physical pseudo date And we Before going on the pseudo date We were Communicating really well And um, I didn't find my a- Anxious attachment was as Bad mm. okay. During the physical thing uh, Because there's uh, He will be like oh, I'm busy You know, he will just say through text or through call this was like uh, an old friend lah but when i find myself on online dating the anxious attachment was bad mm. so i'm not sure if like why is that mm. so? um again it's magnified mm. it's amplified things like that is amplified like when the other person like for example if i stop talking to you your santi for like 10 minutes while I'm on my phone you'll know that I'm still here I still want to yeah. talk to you just give me 10 minutes while I text somebody but when the other person goes to you for 30 minutes again the uncertainty uncertainty is amplified so the fuel to our anxiety fire is uncertainties mm-hmm. things that we cannot control and when it's online there's a lot more things that we cannot control, control. so that's why it's amplified um back to your question Adeline yeah. like whether or not the person who's trying to um work on themselves uh, should avoid online dating i would say yes and no okay. um yes if you think that it's worsening that you know like it's it's something that you that makes you feel worse uh then yes you definitely should yeah. avoid it if it helps you to work on yourself but it could also be a medium of you to practice secure attachment to practice mm. boundaries um if you're ready for that yeah so i guess it depends on i think on this the, is something yeah. that nobody talks about mm. online dating you know i mean this whole attachment thing yeah. i don't i i mean you hear a lot of other stuff about online dating but nobody much speaks about ghosting yeah. and attachments and mm. stuff like that so yeah, yeah this is mental works that ghost correct us, correct uh, and you might even be more aware of yourself mm. you know mm. so yeah okay guys let's take a shot